So, what is your name? Where are you originally from? And where did and why did you choose to come to America? My name is Sarah Hoffman. I am from Australia, and I uh, originally chose to. Well, I originally chose to come to um, America on vacation, um, but um, I've been here for. I've been here for several trips, uh, extended trips now, and and uh, um, and it's <clears throat> it's still yeah still for vacation purposes. Okay. Um. Is what? Is it still recording? Yeah, it's still going. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, what are some of the most challenging obstacles you face when you first arrived? Mm -hmm. um, we, I guess, uh, a big thing was uh, some of the driving, some of the driving rules. Um, so in Australia, we we drive on the left hand side of the road. Um, so here, obviously, you're on the right hand side, and some of the the rules are very different too. Um, so at home, where where we would have roundabouts, you guys have um, like the four ways and the all ways, uh, which was pretty different. And um, so that took me that took me a couple of goes. I actually had to <laughs> there's uh, I had to ask like what to do and I got beeped out a few times because uh, there's actually, there's no driving test or or any sort of theory or anything that um, that you have to do before you can before you can drive here so um, so that was a fun one and um, I guess uh, I guess a couple of things with language nothing major obviously but um, some of our slang terms are very, are very different, um, and yeah, they're, they're probably the two, probably two, two of them. But um, I mean, we're, you know, we're both English-speaking countries, um, so lots of similarities as well, I guess. Very cool. All right. So, how did you cope with these challenges? Okay. Um, so. I guess just just be aware that there you know that things are are different even though you know we speak basically the same language um ask questions that's what you know that's what I did um everyone here is just so you know so friendly so it doesn't you know doesn't hurt to ask and um and stuff with like the 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 slang words and stuff like um you, you know people like People like hearing about, you know, different different words and terms, so it's, you know, it's a bit, a bit funny sometimes. That's okay. All right. Um, what are some challenges that you still face today? Um, well, hmm, good question. I've been, well, see, I've, this is my sixth trip here and now to America and they've all been for for three months at a time so in the last few years I've spent um, it's like 18 months here um, so I guess that's <clears throat> that's given me a good uh, good opportunity to to assimilate pretty well um, so I, I don't really face any challenges anymore I don't think okay um, so your driving's pretty good <laughs> yeah, I, I reckon I drive alright. <laughs> the hardest thing is when I go go back to Australia, I have to I have to think where where I should be. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Uh, what support services, clubs, organizations, or agencies, friends or family, stuff like that, have helped you transition into the American culture? Mm -hmm. Um. So definitely the friends that I made here and um, I have work colleagues here also um, you know and every, everyone's so friendly like each time I come I love to like broaden my you know my network of you know of, of friends and people that I've come to be very close to so um, 
so yeah so not not any agencies or anything like that but definitely friends and people that I've met through friends that um have been really you know supportive and welcoming okay what are some things that you like more about living in the United States mm -hmm. um I this is always a little bit of a hard one to put into words for me, but um, I love the people here. I think Americans are very, uh, very traditional and very patriotic. They have um, they have a much longer history in their country than the Australians do. Um, I mean, Australia is only you know two hundred years old. It's we haven't got um, you know as much history you know embedded in our culture that Americans do, and I love that about about coming here. Uh, uh, lo lo the little things too, like food. Um, there's so much variety uh, when you go into the supermarkets here that, that we just don't have back in Australia. Um, what else? Um, shopping. Shopping is great, great here. Every time I'm here, I will do like all my sort of clothes and toiletry um, shopping here. The, the variety is just so good and the value for money. And um, yeah, so some, some material things and some, yeah, a lot about the people though. Okay. If you have family living here too, how are they adjusting to the American culture? I I don't have any uh, blood relatives here. No. I don't. Do you have any friends or anyone who comes from Australia who are in that situation or adjusting? I, I, yeah, I do actually. Um, if I have a story um, about some friends of mine who. Um, so it was a couple, and they're Australian, and he uh, he got transferred over here for work, and um, so he was able to bring his wife, and uh, they were only able to bring their youngest daughter, who was still in school at that time. Um, so the rules around that were um, there are children that were over 18 that were not considered dependents anymore, couldn't come. So I, I know that was a little bit difficult for them, um, that, that um, you know, it sort of split the family. Um, you know, even, even though they were, you know, sort of 20-ish, but, you know, it was, a, it was a, permanent, a permanent move. So it was hard that the, you know, that the other kids had to stay, stay back home um, in Australia. And, um, and I guess the other thing, the other rule around that was that uh, even though Tony got transferred, the husband got transferred here for work, um, his wife couldn't work. Um, so that was, yeah, it was another, another rule because of the way that the, the visa process was, um, she couldn't work, so couldn't earn, legally earn, um, earn money here. So it was a little bit difficult for her because she'd worked all her life and, huh. and couldn't anymore. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you have family living abroad, how do you communicate with them and how often? Mm-hmm. Um, I do. So, so all of my family is still back home um, in Australia, and Skype and Skype and FaceTime are, you know, an, an awesome thing. But with the time difference, um, it's I, I really it, we really sort of cross paths because um, so our so well here while it's um, our night time, it's their next morning, the, the following day. Um, so if my mom is at work, <clears throat> um, so I won't catch her during the day at all. And then by the time she's home from work, I'm already in bed asleep. So it's kind of, it's kind of hard to catch, to get the time difference right to do the Skype and the FaceTime. Uh, so mostly we do email. It just, just works better. So It's a bummer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, so I have to try and catch her, like, on her weekend. Yeah. So, like, our 
Friday night is her Saturday morning, but but then that's hard too because if you know if I'm um, you know out with friends on a Friday night, then it's doesn't work either. So. Darn. <laughs> okay. And what would you recommend for others considering living abroad in the United States? Mm-hmm. Um, I just think, I just think, gosh, you know, be be open. Um, you know, it, just take it all in, enjoy the experience. Don't have any um, preconceived ideas about about stereotypes or you know what they might have seen on you know on television about Americans or, or anyone else um, just just be open to the experience sure and a new experience it's such a you know, such an exciting, exciting, big, exciting world, and I just, yeah, I just love it. Cool. Okay. Mm. That was the last one. I'm going to stop it. <laughs>